by rockets. Fox 45 News is hearing from the face of Baltimore's shock trauma, the leader of an elite surgical team who says something needs to be done to save Baltimore's young people. Okay, shock trauma. Doctors are now speaking out. It's bad. Shock trauma. Doctors, surgeons are now like, yo. <laughs> I mean, at what point, like, <laughs> what we need the goddamn mortician to come out, man? Be like, look, man, I'm tired, man. I ain't had a day off in a fucking year, man. He's like, <laughs> day off a year. <laughs> Golly. I mean, people, the surgeons are starting to complain. Where was it? Was it Jackson where they had the one glider mortician for the entire town of Sun People? Maybe so. It was I, something I like that, yeah. It. Yeah, but this is, this is, this is. Yo, if this don't, if if you was on the fence before this, I think this should push you over. As juvenile violence skyrockets, Fox 45 News is hearing from the face of Baltimore's shock trauma, the leader of an elite surgical team who says something needs to be done to save Baltimore's young people. What I care about is getting to a place where there are fewer holes in a smaller number of people. Bring me a, a solution that that leads to fewer holes and a smaller number of people. I'm all for it. He's tired, man. Y'all working him like a human <laughs> slave. <laughs> Damn. I don't blame him, man. He, he exhausted, man. He ain't signed up for all this shit. When you're a surgeon, you expect the, you know what I'm saying, the car accident here. He should maybe. take a break and go be a medic mm -hmm. in Ukraine or something. Yeah, exactly, man. Go to go to a war torn region, and yeah, man, it's it's like it's literally insane, man. Look at him; he's serious too. He's not joking. He's not playing around. This is not hyperbole. He's exhausted. Salute to uh, physically too, not like mentally. He's physically exhausted. Yeah, he look like he look like he look his face, man. He look like he had enough of this he's shit, he's man. staring into a, a thousand yard stare right there, seeing all the bodies of all the sun teens that have come across his operating table. Yeah, it's just this. It's just it's, you. I mean, come on, black people, man. Yeah, I never heard no shit like this. Like a surgeon or a doctor, somebody come on and say like this shit got to stop. I never in my life, and I'm yeah. 43. I never. Salute to Gil B, man. He said salute from an Oklahoma glider. Oklahoma in the building. Salute to Steve S. Oc Nation Hall of Famer, man. The Fox 45's Maxine Stryker sat down with Chief Trauma Surgeon Dr. Thomas Scalia and two top pediatricians about the impact of the violence they're seeing. She brings us their story from the front lines of the city's crime crisis. As Baltimore City continues to claim lives, a not so secret weapon in the fight against gun violence is the state's designated trauma hospital, Shock Trauma. Dr. Thomas Scalia, the chief and face of the trauma center for more than two decades, almost missing our interview Wednesday after another young person came through his doors, a victim. A <laughs> Stop it. He said he almost missed the interview. God, we, we, we fuck up everything. Even made him late for the interview. God, I believe. Oh, shit, man. I just, man, listen, man. You gliders, man. Go have a bunch of babies. Take trips. Stop trying to fix this, man. Take trips. Pick up hobbies. You know, um, fucking, I don't give a fuck if it's a Dukos or knitting. Find something better to do. You can't fix this. And plus, niggas hate you. Oh. You ain't lying. <laughs> yeah, they hate you too. <laughs> that part. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the, the the fact that they hate you is is, is um yeah yeah 
That's what really makes it so pathetic, you know? <laughs> Breaking your back over these people that fucking stomp on you if they felt shout like out it. To them, shout out to them white, the pasty liberals, though. They yeah, make it happen. Real. And the yeah. black babies. <laughs> Yeah. Just barely got here because we admitted a 20 year old kid that came in desperately ill after being stabbed. And uh, this is not unusual. Just a few days ago, Baltimore surpassed 100 homicides. Even more people have been shot and survived. Many of them have come through your doors. What has the year been like so far? You know, the violence is, to me, is uh, not really, we've not really seen a substantial decrease in it certainly doesn't feel like we've had a substantial decrease in it. And it's a, uh, it's, as I said, it's just part of every day of our lives. And it's not a very good part of every day of our lives. Scalia, oh. alongside University of Maryland Medical Center, leading pediatrician, Dr. Rebecca Carter, and director of University of Maryland Children's Hospital, Dr. Steven Zinn, declaring gun violence among young people a public health emergency. While this is affecting so many youth and young adults, this is also affecting so many young children who are witnessing violence, who are witnessing all of the trauma that comes along with all of the violence that they're seeing in neighborhoods and in their families. If you tortured this her, you couldn't get her to say it was only black kids. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. I think, I think maybe if you deprived her of food after she ate a, like maybe five or six rocks just to have something on her stomach, she <laughs> yes. might admit that it was baby. <laughs> But yeah, man. You heard what he said? He said, he said, this is not unusual of the violence that happens and this is an everyday life type. This is part of life. <laughs> what the yeah. fuck? Yeah, this is... This is, this is, this is, and, and that's the thing about it. Like the sitting here and not saying who it is, is almost criminal to an extent, because if you don't say who it is, you're like, for instance, it's one thing for like a pace, JJ Reddick or somebody to not say who it is. He, he only knows black basketball players. All the black guys he knows are rich. And they fucking all fucking like are alive and shit. You know what I'm saying? Um, they all live in great neighborhoods and shit. All the kids go to private school. This chick, she sees them coming in on gurneys, bleeding out one after another. It's hard not to fucking pick up a pattern, man. Talk about black bodies. Yeah. All of the violence that they're seeing in neighborhoods and in their families. This year alone, 10 juveniles have been shot and killed, a more than 50% increase over this time last year. Wow. And nearly 40 other children have survived gunshot wounds. You're definitely seeing that there's a spike of more kids coming in. No question. No question at all. And, and really hurt. Not just a little hurt. Really hurt. One of the youngest homicide victims, 12-year-old Jalen Richards, killed last month in South Baltimore. What is that like for you for, on a daily basis or, you know, on a weekly basis, having to, to tell families, mothers, fathers, their children are gone? Yeah, it is the worst thing that I do. I, I can tell you the number of steps it is from the TRU to the waiting room. And... Um, it is, it's just so discouraging. And as I age and get closer to my own death, it, it has affected me more and more and more, not less. Yeah, Are you able tell. to go home at night and, and turn your brains off and not think about these kids that you're treating? I don't think so. What we're doing is harming a whole generation of, of citizens, of children. It is just not right that the number one cause of death in, children's is gun, in children is gun violence. It's just not right. You children. children. <laughs> they keep on saying children instead of black. Stop it. Black children. And 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 the news reporter, she cleaned up her words. She said, um, weekly. I mean, I mean she said daily. I mean weekly. Like she cleaned that shit up real quick. Yeah, why did she ask? Like, what what uh, are you like 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 um what, what trends are you noticing? <laughs> yeah. yeah. She cleaned that shit up real quick. This shit is this shit is discouraging yeah i guess it's a little bit more than discouraging of 
of citizens, of children. It is just not right that the number one cause of death in, children's is gun, in children is gun violence. It's just not right. You've been here a, a long time. <laughs> yeah. You said you don't think things have gotten any better over the years. Uh, does it ever cross your mind, like, I can't do this anymore. Things aren't getting any better. Yes. I live a 10-minute walk from here. It's my city. When I go home, I haven't left it. I'm still here. And does it get discouraging? Of course it gets discouraging. I, it hasn't beaten me down enough to quit yet. Maybe one day, but not today. With a 95% survival rate, most victims who come through the doors of shock trauma walk back out. Without shock trauma, where would Baltimore be? How much higher would the homicide count be every year? A lot. You hear that? I'll quit so that shit, I, all the niggas die. <laughs> Fuck that. I'm quitting. I'll, I'll take my whole team with me, nigga. Like, we out here. Fuck that. Ah, uh, yes, medical racism. Yeah, exactly. Hey, man. Fuck it. Genetic fuck Freak it. says, bruh, you barbecued pasty red last night. And you need to start splicing AP's rants and saving for the premium subscription. Holy salute. Yeah, man. Shout out to AP, man. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, so this guy says, if it wasn't for them, the murder rate would be through the roof. So these people are literally earth angels. These are 95%. These are earth angels. These people are saving lives. Saving black lives. These people are fucking angels. You know, I, it hasn't beaten me down enough to quit yet. Maybe one day, but not today. With a 95% survival rate, most victims who come through the doors of shock trauma walk back out. Without shock trauma, where would Baltimore be? How much higher would the homicide count be every year? A lot. Yeah. 95%. <laughs> That's high. I mean, shit, man. These people are fucking angels, man. Listen, man, salute, man. Operation salutes you, man. I mean, we're looking at people who save lives. I mean, they literally save lives. We're not talking about the bullshit, say, like, I mean, I, I talked to a son, man. I seen a son, man, going the wrong route. I pulled him to the side, man, and, you know, told him that he was doing the wrong thing, man. And he straightened out. Nah, these motherfuckers is stitching you up, pulling bullets out your ass, stopping bleeding 40 cc's of this, 100 cc's of that, stitching your ass up, um, taking grafts, skin grafts. Give me oh, more. Shit. Yeah, man, getting you right, man. These people are fucking angry. I'm sure all those uh, Sundians are paying for it. They're all insured. <laughs> oh, shit, man. Come this on, is, man. You know we get our shit for free, baby. This is white gliders in the county and Towson and place Glen Burnie. This is why your health insurance is like fucking out, out of control or a major part of it, at least. And the guy who carjacks you has probably been through shock trauma. That's the sad part about it. Yeah. They're saving the wrong people's lives sometimes. I told you, I'm taking my whole team with me out. Wow, and these, and then, like you said, the black these people fucking hate you. That's a um, <laughs> salute to um Mike G M D. We got a doctor in the building, man. We got a doctor, man. Oh, Get the link, man. Link in the description. Uh, he said, "When I trained at shock trauma, we joked about selling armed and armored wheelchairs to Sun Teens." <laughs> 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 Hit the link, man. Hit the link. Yeah, he, just, he needs to join the link right now. Yeah, I want to know what they're saying behind the scenes on this stuff. Yeah, man. Hit the link. Um, shout out to Rami, man. Make sure y'all check out the unofficial Op Nation Discord, man. More than 100? Maybe. Mm -hmm. I mean, we'll see um, seven or 800 gunshot wounds this year if it's 
the wow. year continues along as it has, That's it. 100 is not out of the question. And how crazy is it to think about that? What if you guys weren't here, you know? It's, uh, I think about that more than every once in a while, <laughs> including right now as I think about this young kid that we just finished taking care of. I think about of. Why do you think all the it's time. Happening? I personally believe it has to do with this culture that is now part of Baltimore. It's, it's accepted that uh, people are going to get shot. And, you know, we had a, a young Black kid people. come in and die yeah. yesterday, two days ago, with a gunshot wound and went down and talked to his parents. And as I have remarked before, they're they're very sad, they're very grief stricken, but they're not surprised. Yeah, because he, he's a fucking thug. They keep on leaving out the black part. I, yeah. I heard black not once. Yeah, man. Yeah, I take you man. Listen, man. They're talking. They're not just talking about black people. They're talking about like. Dark skinned people, like we not even talk about mulatto, man. The point <laughs> like literally black people. Let me show you the Baltimore gun memorial right quick, man. Salute to everybody, man. Um, out there, man. Let me show you the Baltimore what they what what these people look like. This down in Baltimore. Look at this shit. This is the kid. We did the story on him. Remember on Brito? He got killed by the little midget son team. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just fucking working the store. Working. This is the kid that they were just talking about. 12 year old. Yeah, there's someone I'm on that shit. Damn. Look at these. Look at these motherfuckers, man. What happened to the jigaboo in the suit? This one right here? Yeah. Jimmy Hug Hig Higginbotham. Oh, damn. They don't even give him. Yo, they, they don't even have a story for him. He just dead. Like, his story don't have nothing. That's crazy. It's just a map. He had three <laughs> boys, four girls. Damn. Yeah, it's just a map of where he died. Like, the spot on the map where he died. That's all they have. They don't have nothing. Owner and owner of operator. I don't know. Maybe they mean owner and operator. Yeah, that's um, what I thought. Yes, high value man. He get, he get. Yeah, that's sad. He don't even get a write up. There's nothing. There's no that's write up. Sad. That's sad as shit. Let me show y'all what they got under his fucking for his article, man. For him dying, I have that brother right there, man. That's what they got. Disrespectful, right? <laughs> So disrespectful. That must mean he had a full time job and was doing the right thing. Yeah, <laughs> that's fucking disrespectful, man. That's crazy, right? Yeah, man. He was. I mean, look at this shit. He just got the spot on the map where he died. Well, it just happened too last month. Yeah, that's just that's just yeah. That's all they got for it. Um. Yeah, these people, these people, these are black people that are dying in Baltimore, man. Their gun memorial is, um, yeah, look at this shit. It's all black people. Now, you remember her, the grandmother. We did this story where the, um, the, the girl got in an argument with her neighbor over the parking space, and she called her father and her best friend over there. Her, fa her father, her best friend, and her grandmother came over there to, like, you know, um, help her because the dude was talking crazy. And the dude shot her grandmother dead, shot her father dead, and shot her best friend dead. Damn. This is her father right here. Damn. Damn, cuz. People don't care about lives at all. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and then and they caught him, but we did, we, did, we did that story, man. I said, whew. She just shot the grandmother right in the spot. Boom, boom, boom. Right in the street. And this um, is old parking spot. Yeah, old parking spot. Um, that was the genesis of it. I'm sure, like, you know, it, it went, that was the spark. But then, you know, once you start arguing, man, some people, man, it's about that. Man. Yeah, fuck you, yeah. Say, fuck you say it's just that, that, part, 
you don't know how to manage our emotions and shit. Once we yeah. go up, like, yeah, what's what's up? Um, yeah, look at these motherfuckers, man. Look at these motherfuckers, man. Some of them look like they deserve it, though, don't they? Oh, definitely, man. Like, this nigga right here, man, with all these tattoos on his face. <laughs> but, but still, I mean, at this end of the day, when they come and shop trauma, man, they're going to try to save these motherfuckers. Mm-hmm. And none of them organ donors. None of them. Damn, Jamira Barrell. Damn. Damn. She was pregnant. Brutally murdered. Her and the baby. Brutally. A young teenager who was killed in Baltimore the weekend was confirmed to be pregnant. She was brutally murdered. Oh, um, damn, she was fine. Um, a young expectant mother was rushed to a nearby hospital where she was tragically pronounced dead. Shit. Um, no information, no information on who did it. I don't know who did it. But she just a, she just a goddamn, um, what did you call her? <laughs> she just a ghost killed her ass. She's a memory. Yeah, they don't know nothing. Damn, no suspect information. Nothing. They don't have Everybody, everybody in the hood know who did it, though. You already know. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm sure. Damn. Wow. Shit. Ruthless, man. Ruthless. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, this is what it looked like, man. <laughs> It's what the government world looking for. Everybody on there black. And if they ain't black, they got killed by a black person. Look at Jessica Johnson. She a glider, too. Fatally shot in, in the head inside a car. Gee, who did that? <laughs> shot death in public. Oh, shit, man. Yeah, man. She got her TV turned off, man. Shit. Um, damn! You remember her? We did a story on her. Four ma mass mass men broke into her home. It was it was some um it was four son teens broke into her home and killed her. It was a robbery. They just they she was a college student. It was like hella random. Like they just was breaking in houses and and they and they and no she the only one that got killed because I think she. She moved or something. It was some shit. They said every they put everybody on the ground, and she was the only one they killed. Um, yeah, because she didn't want to give up her phone or something. Yeah, her that. phone. That was what it was. Yeah, she didn't give up her phone. She looked kind of slow a little bit. She might have been like a little bit slow or something. I don't know. And they, you know, some man ain't got time. He in a rush, man. They trying to get in and out, man. You yeah. vegetating this shit. For that bullshit. Yeah, hey, smoke your ass. Yeah, I, but her tears are a more potent weapon than anything a sun teen could ever wield. Oh yeah, her 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 tears lead to the death. They they my they just brain they, explodes every time I have to hear that shit. Like, <laughs> yeah, her tears are basically like the secret ingredient in lynching. You can fill a river of Olympic swimming pool with the tears of glider women brutally murdered by sun people in this country. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, look at her, man, Christy Helmer. Confess, fiance, killer, portrayed happy relationship online. So she, I think she got killed by her. Yeah, her fiance is a, a glider. But at least we got one, one, one glider woman that was killed by her, her hood, her, 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 her fiance. Damn, look at her, man, Angel. Shit, pregnant too. She was pregnant too. She was pregnant too, and she got shot. She was pregnant too. God damn! They delivered the baby. Pretty pregnant joints getting smitten. They don't care. These dudes do not give a damn. Yeah, man. Equal opportunity bullets. She, hey, fuck. Mm, mm, they managed to deliver the baby girl. 
So that's great. That baby gonna be fucked up for the rest of his life. Wow. Wow. Oh, they don't even know who did it. Nah. These people be getting these women be getting killed in broad daylight, and it don't be no it just none of it, nobody. And, and some people talk about the criminal justice. It's the same thing in Philly, right? Y'all don't be having like suspects and all the murders, right? Yeah, we used to until we got the liberal DA. So all that, a lot of that stuff went down. Like as soon as they start letting a lot of these dudes out of jail, that's when you notice a lot of this stuff start happening. But they'll never talk about it. Brittany Kaiser. Double shooting. See, they don't know who did this either, man. Um, no details about a possible motive. Yo, it's crazy when you see the glider chicks getting getting uh, killed and nobody saying anything. They, they say the complete opposite in the media. The glider women are like causing sun men to be fucking thrown in jail and murdered by police because, you know, oh, Lord, officer, this sun man is accosting me. Yeah, that's what happened. What story we're gonna get into later on? The story I fell for that story too about that Did bike, Karen, bike Karen. Yeah, I knew I something was shady. I knew yeah. something was shady. We won't get into that, and we won't get into that in, in a minute, man. Um, Damn, she was fifty-five. Yeah, she. And that's the old picture. Yeah, yeah, she's um, yeah, definitely that's you old bitch. But yeah, look at all these things. So it's like. It's like, it's like maybe one percent of the fucking people on here are white. Teen charged in Northeast Baltimore killing a woman doing DoorDash delivery. In a place like Baltimore, all the gliders on the on the gun memorial are murdered by <laughs> sun people. You know, you go to like other places in the country and it gets more glidery, but this is just. She was doing, she was doing DoorDash. They caught her slipping. Doing the DoorDash, yeah, man. I remember that. I think I did that story. Yeah, they rolled up on her. Yeah, and I'm saying, yeah, I'm, I did that story. Yeah, now that I remember, because this picture of her with the hat, yeah, that's her right here. Yeah, they caught her slipping. Um, gotta be aware out here, man. You gotta have your head on the floor. Oh, this one right here, this beautiful woman. I remember her. Um, yeah, she was shot. In the mall, sitting in her car, Sun Man walked up on her, murked her ass. I'm talking about like, you you remember that shooting y'all had in Philly a couple of weeks ago where the Hitman did it? The girl yeah, was I did a story on it. Yeah, yeah. It was in drive through. It was this there. was like that. Like dude just walked up, ha ha ha. Yeah, I did a story on that one, man. It was the, it was her boyfriend's mistress, yeah. baby dad's cousin. <laughs> the dumbest thing you ever heard in your life. Yeah, that shit sound like ball back channel shit. Damn. Yeah, it was so dumb. Yeah, I did a whole show on that. I was like, it was crazy how they did it too. Yeah, and, was, yeah, yeah. and he, she sent them five dollars. <laughs> yeah, exactly, man. It, five dollars for what? For the hit? Yeah. That's what it like. <laughs> now I think they was communicating on on Cash App. Cash App. Yeah. And so they kind of hide they communicate. They didn't want to text, but they was communicating through Cash App. Yeah. He had yeah. a whole layout of her whole house. Like they was watching her for a while. The way she went to work, it was crazy. Yeah, it's just crazy, man. Look at this shit. This is what's coming through the ER out there in Baltimore, man. Um, it, it's just it's it's in the fact that they've gone all this time and haven't said anything. Oh, Mike G in the building. What's up, Mike G? Hey, how you doing? How's it going, man? What's up, good, man? Good, good. Yeah, no, I had to come on. I saw you. I saw that article, that that interview with Dr. Scalia uh, earlier today. And yeah, I was there in the early 2000s. Uh, I got, I'm looking. In Baltimore? My, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was, uh, I'm a radiologist. I'm a trauma radiologist. Were you here before? Did you come here? Yeah, yeah I came up, I came up yeah, about yeah, yeah. six, seven months you. ago. I yeah. remember you. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go so. Ahead. Yeah, so I uh, I'm in Southern California, but I lived in Baltimore for a couple years doing trauma training. So I was the trauma fellow at Shock Trauma for two and a half years, and uh, yeah, so we would see the the summer that I got there, 
there was a, I guess there was a heroin shortage on the East Coast. And Baltimore at that time was kind of a hub of moving heroin from uh, Central America, like from Florida to New York and to Chicago. And I guess right before I got there, there was a big bust. And so the, the drug crews in the city were fighting for distribution. So I'd been in, in L.A. for my residency, and we would see a little bit of trauma there at UCLA. But when I got to Baltimore that summer, there was a, a full on drug war and we were seeing 15, 20 gunshots a day. I think uh, there was one day in a 12 hour period, we got 32 gunshots. Right. Jeez, how does that feel when you're in there? Like, how long does it take to do surgery with one person? Like, well, just a regular gunshot. It depends. I mean, some of these guys, you know, with something like that, it's true triage where you got some people that they just kind of look at and put on the side and be like, yeah, this guy ain't making it. So let's not even put Wait, resources sir. on him. Um, other people, you know, the, the trauma hospital, shock trauma is next to the university hospital. And so there's about 20 different operating rooms that they can kind of just spill out into. So something like this happens to just kind of mobilize uh, not just the trauma surgeons, but they'll start pulling surgeons from other departments to come do things. So how many um, do, do do you guys amongst each other? Because I know you guys talk. I watched Grey's Anatomy a few times. You got in the ER, y'all guys talking shit, right? So what do y'all say about the racial dynamic? I mean, we, we don't, when I was at shock trauma, we didn't talk about it, but we knew, I mean, every guy comes in there, you know, looking like me. So, uh, yeah, it, it's obvious. That's why I, I put that super chat. Like we, we joked about selling armed and armored wheelchairs to the, uh, to the drug dealers because they would come in, you know, the first time, second time, third time. And then by the fourth time, eventually they would take a bullet to their spine. And then they'd be in a wheelchair. So you guys are recognizing these people? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we used to – I I never saw this, but the rumor was that on the – if you came in three times, you got a shirt. If you came in with three different Who is footing the bill for, like, going through trauma four times before, you know, finally getting it the last time? The taxpayers. Okay, that's what I assumed. Yeah. Yeah. I imagine that's a pretty pricey price tag. Yeah, and that's why trauma centers and emergency rooms – Uh, A lot of private hospitals have gotten rid of them because it's a money sink. Your hospital loses money on a trauma center because of people like this coming in. So you don't, it's just a money sink. Right. They never stop coming in. No, they never stop until they're dead. Yeah. One of my, when I was there, uh, I had a good friend who was the transplant surgeon and he was actually across town at Hopkins, but I knew whenever I saw him, uh, walking around the shock trauma that he was there to do an organ har- harvest on the dead person or someone, you know, who's about to die. So, yeah. But, yeah, we knew. We, I mean, we knew. It was all sun teens. Uh, a lot of these sun teens organ donors? Uh, sometimes, yeah. They take one to the head, and then that would be his job to uh, talk to the family to get them oh, to harvest the, the organs. family has the – so, do, do, have you ever had family say no? Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, especially if one of these guys takes a, a bullet to the head, you know, you can give. So the heart will go to one person. The lungs might go to two different people. The liver will go to two different people. Uh, the eyes will go to the, the corneas will go to somebody else. So you could you could help seven people, eight people. And, and some people still be like, no. Nah. Yeah. Yeah. How, like, what's the percentage you think they say no? Mm, 30 to 40 percent. Wow, they're getting all this life saved. You guys are fucking angels, and they the least they could do is fucking give back something. And they'd be like, No, yep, oh my god, my god, man. Yeah, so I've come back to Southern California now. I'm at a, a trauma center about an hour east of of LA and over the past, you know, since the summer of Floyd, I think we've steadily seen an increase 
In the summertime, I'm used to seeing one or two gunshots a week. But for the last year, it's been about one a day. Almost every single day, there's a new one. And it's almost always, uh, you know, Suntine or uh, Umbrito teen. Salute to Murray Moss. He says, Gun Memorial don't lie. Yet, Lamoron James still be saying they be hunting us every day. Yeah, man. Facts, man. Um, yeah, man. I just so when you when you go to sleep at night, right? Do you see these people, or do you do you think about it, or do you just have you can you know turn the page? Sometimes I do, yeah. When especially, I don't always get the story as a radiologist. I'm sometimes uh, a little bit detached, but sometimes I do. You know, I've seen I've seen the twelve year olds that come in. You know, I've seen. Uh, people who just innocently took one. I actually, you know, we used to always joke when we would see a kid like this, we'd say, oh, I'm sure he was coming back from choir practice. But here at my current hospital, we do have a 22 year old kid who was coming back from choir practice. And uh, yeah, he just took a random bullet. Uh, my first week at shock trauma, there was a kid, I think I might've mentioned it when I was up last time, was a 17 year old kid in Baltimore who was going to a charity basketball game. And that was the last thing he was supposed to do before he left for Yale undergrad. Oh, and yeah. he, he didn't get killed. He was able to go like the next semester, but yeah, he was a 17 year old kid. And we all just thought, Oh, it's another one, another drug you know, guy caught up in the game, but nah, he was, he was about to go to Yale. So it, it does happen. Jeez. Christ. Um, wow. Wow. Um salute to um salute to Chris G, man. Day one. Man, um let's I wonder, let's, I wonder if uh, Claire Stevens blood good got taken out by a sun team. Oh yeah. Nineteen oh seven. Yeah, all these people got listen, man. Listen, man. This stuff been going on since the Emancipation Proclamation, you heard me? Um yeah, man. Woo. I think about this young kid that we just finished taking care of. Why do you think it's happening? I personally believe it has to do with this culture that is now part of Baltimore. It's, it's accepted that uh, people are going to get shot. And, you know, we had a, a young kid come in and die yesterday, two days ago, with a gunshot wound and went down and talked to his parents. And as I have remarked before, they're they're very sad, they're very grief stricken, but they're not surprised. It's a lived reality for parents raising their children in Baltimore. If we sit down a year from now, what do you hope has changed? What is your hope for the children of Baltimore? The number has to be less. It just has to be. I'd like to see a grassroots effort by the citizens to do what you can to Make sure guns are either not available or being kept in a in a very safe fashion. <laughs> Jesus Christ! They so they they don't know anything about these people, man. These people are these people aren't stealing their dad's fucking hunting gun and going and shooting their friend like what well, by accident and shit. This is fucking thuggery. And goddamn criminal fucking gangsterism, man. Salute to George, man. He said, keep up the good work. I, you're the only one who will spit the truth, man. Yeah. Either not available or being kept in a, in a very safe fashion. If in a year we're looking at similar conversations, then what I hope is that at least kids are starting to understand where their options can be and what options are available to them outside of what they might see in terms of violence in surrounding neighborhoods and finding ways to access those options. Bring me a, a solution that, that leads to fewer holes and a smaller number of people, I'm all for it. In Baltimore, Maxine Stryker, Fox 45 News.
Well, I spoke with Dr. Scalia a little more than a year ago. At that time, he told us his team was beaten down and fed up with the violence. You can find that one-on-one -on -one and more from Maxine's interview today on our website, foxbaltimore.com. Mayor Brandon Scott wants to help curb youth crime with a curfew to start Memorial Day weekend, but he hasn't released much information about it. Many law enforcement experts we've spoken with don't think it'll work. During a public safety hearing today, first responders spoke to city council members about delay response times, overworked personnel, even equipment pushed to the limits. In fact, the fire department says they're averaging about nine minutes a call, but have to work overtime to make that happen. Baltimore's assistant EMS chief, James Matt says crews spend 60% of the work day on calls, and he says that's too much. If we could get down to about 50% or less, it would give our members a chance to slow down, get to the higher priority calls. They're working the EMS to death, too. So, I mean, it makes sense, though. That makes sense. Those are the people that take them to the fucking shock drama. This is every city, huh? New Orleans <laughs> is just like this on the brink of destruction. You know, all, all services stressed to the max. Everywhere. We cause mm -hmm. destruction everywhere. The liberals asked for this, though. This is what they wanted. This is what they were talking about in 2020. They got what they wanted. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah, they got what they wanted. This is what it looks like. This is what that shit. I don't think they, I will say this. I don't think they were smart enough to foresee or thoughtful enough to even consider what it looked like two steps down the line. I think they lived in the moment. I think they're very liberal. People that identify as liberal are generally very low IQ. They don't have um, forward, they're not forward thinking. They, they don't pick up on sequences and patterns. So I don't think that – I think that if you could have somehow slapped them around and tied them to a chair and said, this is what it's going to look like in three years, they might have been like, oh, my God. But, like, they had the power. So when they had the power, they didn't have to listen to anybody <laughs> tell you, hey, man, this is what it's going to look like in three years. Um, but I think had they been forced to digest what it would look like in three years, I think they would have probably been like, yo. This this sucks, man. Yeah, but I, I think they, but the thing is, I, they they doubling and tripling down on it now, though. That's the thing. Yeah. Like when you true. when you still you when you still hear these people talk, they still don't want to admit that they fucked up, and that's my point. Like this yeah. all can be fixed, but Quick. they gotta admit they fucked up, but they never yeah. do it. That's true. Better patient outcomes, better response times. Well, Matt says crews also need time to fill out paperwork and take breaks. He says the fire department is about 50 EMTs short and filling those positions, he says, would help improve workloads and shorten response times. Yeah, 